With the harsh conditions of summertime, you might be noticing that your lawn is not looking as good as it can. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the steps you can take this fall to get a thick, green, beautiful lawn. For cool season grass like I have, the fall is without a doubt the best time to take care of any of those issues that you have. You have an increase in precipitation compared to the summertime and those overall temperatures are starting to come down, which is when your grass really thrives. So it allows you the opportunity to sow new seed, grow new grass, or take care of any of the issues that you have in your lawn. Probably the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you start anything is figure out what are your goals you have for your project. Whether it be having the most immaculate, perfect golf course lawn or just taking care of some of those weeds and thickening up the grass that you already have, identifying your goals and creating a plan to achieve those goals are the keys to success when it comes to anything in life. Two of the most common goals that people have going into the fall is one, taking care of weeds. Because during the summertime, those weeds can thrive and take over your lawn if you're not on top of them. And two, building up your turf by overseeding or adding new grass into your existing lawn. And doing those things together can be challenging. One thing that's really important is understanding what you've done up to this point. If you're planning on putting down grass seed, it's important to think, have I put down any kind of weed killer? Have I put down a weed and feed that's gonna prevent those weeds from popping up? Because if you've done that, it's important to look at the label because it's gonna tell you how long you have to wait before you can put down grass seed. One other option you have when it comes to getting rid of weeds is just doing it manually. And that's what I've done continuously for years now. I've gotten rid of all my weeds by pulling them, which allows me to be able to overseed, to thicken up that turf, to get some new varieties of grass that are gonna be disease resistant, drought tolerant, and just the things that I'm looking for. If you're thinking about overseeding this fall, now is the time to start buying your grass seed because you may find that if you go to the store too late, all the good seeds taken up and you can't get the stuff that you want, you end up putting something down that you don't really want. Also, when it comes to choosing your seed, think about the amount of sunlight you get in the area that you're seeding. I have a full sun backyard and almost a complete shade front yard, so that dictates what type of grass seed I wanna put down for each of those areas. Full sun, you can put down pretty much any type of grass seed that you want because it's gonna thrive for the most part. Shaded areas like I have in the front, I've gone with perennial ryegrass because it does pretty well in the shade. Fescue is also another good option when it comes to seeding in the shade. When you're choosing your grass seed, you'll notice there's a bunch of different options to choose from, some less expensive, some more expensive, or your premium grass seeds. This is an example of a premium grass seed. You're gonna pay a little bit more for this, but the reason for that is because the research that's gone in behind this seed. They've tested it out, the drought tolerance, it's disease resistance, and quite honestly, there's only a certain amount of seed that you can yield in a year, and the premium high-end seed is gonna cost you a little bit more money. This I picked up from Barrenbrug. This is regenerating perennial ryegrass. I used this in the areas that I seeded where we used to have trees, it was completely bare. But when it comes to your choice in seed, it's really up to you. And one thing to consider is taking a look at the label on your bag of grass seed. This is gonna show you exactly what cultivars of grass you have and what percentages of each one you have. Also, it's gonna show you the germination percentage. A higher level premium grass seed is gonna have a higher percentage of germination and that's the percentage of the grass seeds that'll actually turn into grass. Since I'm gonna be overseeding this fall, I'm gonna take a look at the calendar and figure out what's the best time for me to seed and also look at the forecast. You don't wanna put seed down if the temperatures are gonna be 90 or 100 degrees because it's gonna to be tough to keep that seed wet and get it to germinate. So a combination of looking at the calendar and looking at the forecast are important. You wanna make sure that when you're overseeding or putting down any kind of seed, you're giving yourself at least six weeks to establish that grass before you get your first frost or your first freeze going into winter time. One of the most common issues I see is that people are dealing with lots of weeds this time of year and they wanna have a nice thick turf, but they've got tons of weeds. So it's important to think to yourself, am I gonna to try to take care of the weeds or am I gonna go the path of trying to put down new grass seed, possibly overseeding or doing a complete renovation? If weeds have gotten out of control in your lawn and you want a fresh start, you can do a complete renovation if you'd like. That's the process of putting down glyphosate and killing off all the weeds and all the grass that you have existing and then bringing in some soil to do some leveling if that's the path you wanna take, and then starting with brand new seed. And if you're gonna go that path, 
it's important to start that quickly because it's gonna take a few applications of that glyphosate to completely kill off all the grass and make sure that you have a clean slate to get that seed down that you want. With your renovation this fall, timing is so important. That first day of frost is an important date for you. When you're putting down grass seed, if you're overseeding, you're doing anything involving trying to get new grass to grow, it's important to try to give that grass some time to establish itself before you get that first frost or even that first freeze. So around Chicago, like me, the first frost is usually around mid-October, so that dictates the timing of my overseeding because overseeding is the path that I'm taking this fall using the dethatcher and then overseeding is what I like to do to crowd out weeds and give me a nice thick turf that my family and I can enjoy. If you don't really have weed issues and you have a pretty healthy lawn, then fertilization is one thing you can do in the fall to take your lawn to the next level. Is slowly feeding your lawn starting in about mid-August and going all the way through until about your first frost. And what I typically do is put down about a quarter pound to a half pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet about every two to three weeks. If you do that, you're going to get amazing results. The grass you have is going to get thicker. Everything's going to fill in and look really nice and green throughout the fall. Two common practices that are typically done in the fall are dethatching and aerating. And you may be thinking to yourself, do I need to do both of those things? And the answer is it's up to you. It really is. I like dethatching anytime that I'm going to overseed. I like to go with the dethatcher because it's going to create some grooves in the ground that's going to allow the seed to fall into those spots, make good contact with the soil and be able to germinate. Aeration is also something that's really good. If you're gonna be overseeding and you aerate, you're gonna have better results than if you don't. Now, if you're on a budget and maybe you don't wanna spend the money on doing both of those things, that's okay too. But realize you're not gonna get the same results if you're overseeding if you don't aerate or if you don't dethatch. If your plan is to dethatch, aerate, and overseed this fall, the order in which you do those things are important. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is dethatching. And if you're going to dethatch your lawn, first of all, figure out what are you going to use? What's your equipment going to be? Second thing is let your lawn dry out a little bit. Hold off on watering for a day or two before you dethatch because if you do that, it's going to more easily pull up the dead material that's sitting on top of your soil, which is going to keep that seed from getting down in the soil. So dethatching is the first step. Aeration. If you're going to aerate, do that after dethatching. And you have the choice. You can pick up the cores if you'd like or you can just leave them on the lawn. They're gonna break down on their own. Next would be overseeding. You've dethatched, you've opened up the ground with the aeration. Now those seeds have a place to fall, make good seed to soil contact, which is gonna give you the best opportunity to grow that new grass. After that, putting down a starter fertilizer. That starter fertilizer is gonna allow your grass to take off, dig down some deep roots, and allow itself to get ready for the stress that's coming in the winter time. So the order in which you do those things are important. You don't wanna put your seed down first, come back a week later and then aerate and then dethatch after that because it throws everything off. They gotta be done in unison and if you do that, you're gonna have great results. When it comes to my goals for this fall, they're the same as they always are. I wanna make sure that I eliminate all weeds and I do that manually by my stand-up weed puller or my hand weed pulling tool. And I also wanna thicken up my turf and take care of any areas that aren't completely thick and full. And I do that by overseeding. So since I don't put down any weed killers, it makes it very simple for me because I don't have to go back and look and think how long do I have to wait before I can seed again because I can seed anytime because I don't use those chemicals. Also, spoon feeding my lawn, giving it that nitrogen that it needs, about a quarter pound to a half pound per thousand square feet about every two to three weeks and making sure I stay on top of watering. If I do that, I get the results that you see right here and you can too. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comments section. Appreciate you watching. Good luck this fall and I'll see you next time.